Welcome everyone to the 2018 Pan American Racquetball Championships. I'm Laura McCormick and I'm joined by Gary Mazaroff and we'll be watching the men's singles event. We have Rodrigo Montoya in the front of the court. Start off serving for Mexico against Carlos Keller from Bolivia. Should be a great one. Just had a great one on the women's side, Laura. Ronda coming back and winning 2-0. First point for Rodrigo Montoya. This is the young Mexican's first Panamericanos. And he's having a great debut in the semifinals. Certainly. It won't be his last. Uh, let's recognize our head official, Fabian Torres from Colombia, and our lines persons, Gustavo Farrell. Uruguay and Danny Maggi from Argentina. Great start for Rodrigo. As you just saw him end that rally with a pinch left side. 2 0 to start off game one. Laura, we've had a lot of positive con uh, comments this week with the new gearback, uh, Gearbox Black Ball. Gearbox now the official ball of the International Racquetball Federation. That's right. This is the first event, not only for the IRF in 2018, but it's the first event with the Gearbox Black Ball, so a new element for our competitors. Montoya lives in Chihuahua in Mexico, and Carlos lives in Santa Cruz de la Sierra in Bolivia. Get a second serve. What a get. First point on the board for Carlos Keller. 1 3. cross-court winner by Keller, so it's now 2-3 in game one. Ties it up pretty quickly, 3-3. Three, three. Laura, you mentioned this is uh, his first go at the Pan Ams for Montoya. 
see if nerves have anything to do with this match. Also, the fact that he's going to be playing doubles later on today. Yeah, talk about a first debut, right? You're playing uh, <laughs> two, That's, two divisions yeah, as well. Yeah. Jump in the deep end and don't get out. <laughs> Carlos certainly could do both. That'll be a side out. Now you mentioned Carlos Keller could certainly also be playing doubles, although for this event this year he is not. His brother, Roland Keller, is playing with um, Moscoso, Con Conorado Moscoso. Good for you. They certainly played well yesterday, destroying Costa Rica 2-0. Yeah, you can catch them in the semifinals later today. Oh, he sticks that racket out and gets it. Ties it up 4 4. Carlos is getting that first serve in, Laura. He's, he's gone right a couple times. Uh, didn't have the success getting it over the short line, but he's getting the angle and the pace on that left side drive. Case in point, he went back right and got it short. He'll keep Rodrigo honest. Six for the Bolivian leads in game one. Great point. You can see Rodrigo poached over there, taking the forehand return off of that backhand Z lob. But uh, he wasn't able to end the rally with that return. Carlos scored. One thing about Montoya, watching him play as much as I have, he likes to feel out his opponent a little bit in the beginning of this match. I would be expecting to see him start to turn it up about now. Certainly did on that serve. There's some fire on that one. Five, seven. Great rally. Keller doing everything he could to get to those balls. He's looking for that short serve, I believe. Is he appealing, Gary? Yes. And it was overturned, so it's 5-7. Second serve. No, no appeal. Both players are entitled to three per game, three usable appeals. And so it was overturned. Carlos still has three. And Laura, unlike uh, most, most many people think that uh, international and IRF rules, excuse me, international and U.S. rules will come back.
So my point is that international and U.S. rules jive on many accounts. They do, but for example, no game-ending opportunity on appeals in international play if you've utilized all your available appeals. So you use three, you don't get a game-ending one. U.S., you do. One of the things about Carlos is he has so many tools. He gets nonchalant at times and lazy. Montoya is trying to tie it at seven. Carlos raised his hand, excuse me, Rodrigo raised his hand asking for a dead ball hinder and it was awarded. Now that is an appeal, is an appealable call. Carlos electing not to use it. And Laura, we saw earlier that uh, Guatemala with Gabby used all their appeals up in game one early and it could have cost them. Yeah, those appeals are such a useful tool, and you do have to be careful to kind of save one in case something happens on game point, um, and use it when you really need to, not so emotionally as we saw Martinez do Correct. in her match. So, Laura, that was the first time that Carlos was successful going right side. I'm watching his body language. He does a little fake with his head when he goes right. He shifts his head left and he goes right. He finally got it over the line and a serve. Fascinating. So he has a tell. So low. So that time, because the previous time Rodrigo poached on that backhand Z lob, Carlos said, I'm gonna go right side. And Rodrigo says, that's okay, I'll splat it. Come on <laughs> in to serve. Nice. It has to be said that these might be two of the most laid back guys off the court. They walk so slow when they're not playing racquetball and they're so fast once they get inside this, this little box. Incredible. As Rodrigo had a, a large passing lane right side there and, and Carlos was able to get to it. Point for Bolivia puts us at 9-6 in game one. So that right side serve more f has, has been uh, more frequent and more successful. It's going to keep Rodrigo guessing. Time out, folks. We'll be back. I think we'll take a look now down in the stands. You can see Rodrigo Montoya, his coach, talking to him getting some advice on what to do when he jumps back out there on the court. I bet they're discussing a little bit of that drive serve to the forehand. Correct, that's Yanko Renteria, who is his coach for this event. He lives in Monterey. You see uh, the president of Guatemala Racquetball, Dr. Ware next to Rodrigo on his right. And Fabian Paria, one of the Mexican coaches as well. We have 12 countries represented this week, including Cuba. Laura, Cuba ladies are going to medal. That's huge. Yeah, a great tournament for, for Cuba, and we're so happy to have them 
here as well. Nice to round out the 12 countries that are joining us. We also saw uh, Michael Moyet. He was in the quarterfinals yesterday. That was live streaming. And so some great competition. He went right again, short, comes back. Rodrigo takes it early. Soft hands by both players. Incredible on uh, Keller's part just there. Side wall, front wall, two bounces point. Short serve, he'll get a second. So that time, Laura, Rodrigo held his ground. Consequently, his return to serve was from deep court. And he wasn't able to do much with it. And Carlos put it away. Great serve selection in game one from Carlos. And execution, may we add. That ball skips, and there's an opportunity now for Montoya to score some points. Keller went on quite a run there, giving himself a nice lead. He'd like a do-over on that last shot. He had the entire right side. He decided to pinch it and floored it. Should be avoidable hinder. Side out. Twelve serving six in game one. Carlos has controlled this game, Laura. It'll be neat to see if he can continue. And if if he closes this out, this out, see what adjustments Team Mexico will make in between games one and two. Another timeout from Rodrigo Montoya. He's using his second. Each player is allowed two timeouts per game. He's down right now. He needs to switch something up. Gary, if you were there and you could tell him one piece of advice, what would it be? Try to calm down. Make your shots when you get them. And then when you get in to serve, you need to score. You haven't been successful uh, with your serves. He did score a couple, as you said earlier, when you said he's going to uh, pull it up a tad, which he did on the drive serve, so he got some weak returns. It can take its toll, especially this is the seventh day of the event. He's playing singles and doubles. Is he gonna be able to maintain that, that pulse, if you will? And Carlos is playing one event, he's singles only. So skip was called, oh. much to the chagrin of Rodrigo. Wonder if he'll appeal. Don't think Montoya has used any of his appeals yet. He chooses not to and Keller serves 13-6. Wow. Oh, an ace serve, excuse me, that was game point. It's 15-6, game one. Carlos Keller, the Bolivian, is the victor. 
We'll be back in just a few moments to see what Rodrigo Montoya answers back from Team Mexico. We're back at the Pan American Racquetball Championships. I'm Laura McCormick and I'm joined by Gary Mazaroff. We're watching Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico and Carlos Keller from Bolivia. This is the semifinals. And Keller won game one, 15-6. Gary, what were your thoughts on what we saw in game one? Nice serve selection. After using the right side on his drive serve and hitting him short, he made some type of adjustment. He was able to get it over the line, kept Rodrigo guessing. And consequently, when he did get to the ball, he was giving him weak returns. Also, few unforced errors on the point, uh, part of Keller. Pretty much full control by Keller in game one. We'll see what the Mexican coaching staff has advised Rodrigo to do. And Carlos, if I'm Carlos's coach, I'm telling him to keep that intensity up. He has a tendency to wane at times. So here's a telltale right now. He has a serve. He needs to score. Short serve. He goes back to the backhand. And Rago, Rodrigo waits on it again. Great start for Rodrigo, side out. There's that punch power you were talking about, Laura. He's hitting it. Incredible. Right side winner. Carlos just standing right in the middle of that court for that ball. Different twist on that. He gave him a reverse Z to the right side, but it was short. First point for Keller. So the last three backhand Z lobs on uh, the second serve, Rodrigo's held back. I think his coaching staff may have told him, be patient, hold on. Patience is so important in this game. We saw a great example of that in the previous semifinal between Ronda Rasic and Gabriela Martinez. Rasic really showing how patience pays off. She came back from a deficit in both games to win. Yeah, I think it was 3-13 and then she won 15-13. This is the third time this week, Laura. This is rare. Drive serve went into the floor, out. Okay, so short serve was called looking to see if he should appeal, and the answer is no, so second serve. Skip from the Bolivian side out for Montoya. What, Rod need, what Rodrigo needs is a couple points in a row get his confidence up, and then let his skill set take over. <laughs> well, there's the first point for Montoya.
Oh my gosh. Such incredible athleticism from these guys. So fast, it's unbelievable. And sportsmanship. That was great. And a point for Montoya. Gary, you suggested that Montoya needs to go on a bit of a points run right now yeah. to get that confidence back, and we're starting to see that. So he has a rare lead in this match, 2-1 in game two. Rodrigo's been going with the high Z lob to the right. Let's see if he does that on the second serve. Does it again. Back to the ceiling. Talked about the nonchalance, change of shot selection, impatience of Carlos. This is a critical juncture for him in this game. If Rodrigo's going to score, let him score the ones and twos, but not in bunches. Short serve. Same serve on the second. Starting to calmly, I would say, shift now in Montoya's favor as he has a three point lead, 4 1. A broken, broken ball. ball. Broken ball. <laughs> that ball splitting into pieces. <laughs> that means they'll have to replay this point. They'll get a new ball out there. Well, folks, if uh, if that were say second serve, the dead ball hinder would preclude or new uh, preclude the first serve. It would cancel previous fault serve, so it would be first serve again. Those of you that are looking into the rules. Two serves in IRF play now. Skip from Carlos Keller. He'll take a timeout. See if he can put a stop to the bleeding, I guess you could say. Good timeout. Uh, Rodrigo came with a different twist on that serve. He hit a uh, wraparound serve, and Carlos turned with it, but hit an errant shot into the floor. You can see uh, Bolivia's sports staff over there. His brother, Rolando, also known as Coco. You have the two coaches, Gonzalo Amaya and Conrado Moscoso, plus Conrado Jr. there. And you also have... Uh, Kadim Carrasco. Ka yeah, Karim Carrasco. Danny Maggi in the background. He's one of the lines people from Buenos Aires. A lot of people from Bolivia, due to the proximity to Chile, are here. 
We also had a strong group of Bolivians play in the uh, challenger division, which includes juniors, includes age group, 35 and 55 plus singles, and the skill level A division, plus doubles. So a timeout from Carlos Keller. Montoya serves 5-1 in game two. Screen serve. So Laura, Rodrigo keeps going on that second serve with a high Z lob to the right. Carlos has not attacked it. He goes back to the ceiling. We talked about confidence, 6-1 now. His, uh, Rodrigo's really adept right now at making those shots, consequently 6-1. Case in point. Talk about what confidence can do for a player. Montoya looking really calm out there. We can expect to see that from him, you know, throughout the match. 7-1, he's leading in game two. Running Carlos Keller all over the court. Look at the body language, folks. Rodrigo walking around, chest out, nose in the air. Keller slumped. Came right that time, had Carlos moving left. Second serve. Toya is just on it right now. Keller can't find something to work against him. Well, he's basically giving Rodrigo an opportunity to hit batting practice on these returns of the Z lob right side. He's going to the ceiling, either over hitting or under hitting. Fault serve. Coaching staff may need to advise him to take those balls earlier. Different twist that time, Laura. Didn't do any good, but at least he has that within his uh, mindset. 10-1, another timeout on the court. That means Carlos Keller has now exhausted his timeouts for this game. Montoya leads 10-1. You can see Rodrigo Montoya there on the sidelines. His, this is his first Pan American Racquetball Championship. He's playing both singles and doubles. His doubles partner is Alvaro Beltran, and they are in the semifinals. We'll be seeing them later today. They defeated Costa Rica yesterday to get there. My, one of my favorite things about um, these IRF events is, you know, even though this one is part of the IRF. It's hosted by PARC, which is the Pan American Racquetball Confederation. But it's these types of events that bring together the teams and seeing such a big, large staff and the team camaraderie, it's a totally different energy than something like a pro, a pro tour stop or you know a tournament that you might see in your home state. Yeah, it's more family here. And kudos to the local organizing committee, hotel, the club, transportation, excellent food, everything. Okay, you missed that last shot, but uh, 
that point, Carlos was more animated, and that's what he needs. The crowd was pretty animated, too. I think everyone felt that miss for Keller. And you're right, the body language is so important. Uh, Keller is just seems pretty down right now. I mean, he's been here before. He, he's been on the international stage as a young junior player all the way through. Uh, now he's in his mid-20s. So uh, he's been here. What, what he needs to do is, uh, with his coaching staff, is figure out how to get back into the match and uh, what the game plan will be for a tiebreaker, assuming it goes there, but it probably will. Yeah, Montoya in a good position to close out this game and send us to breaker. <laughs> Second serve for Montoya. Nice clean shot from Keller, side out. Snap that forehand down the line, winner. First time in the service box in a while. I'm interested to see what he chooses. And a point for Carlos Keller. He changed his protocol on that serve. He's standing left. That time he hit what we call an inside out drive to the right. That time he comes across his body. Down the line winner from Montoya had the whole court open. Those are tough serves to pick up because you have the drive serve uh, line there, yet he's starting inside of it, so it's not automatic. And then he cut to, comes back across his body. Looks like he'll play a second serve. Same serve, Laura. High Z lob, right side, ceiling return, and put away. That's been one of the stories of this game. Oh, and wins it on an ace serve. These guys splitting games. Keller winning game one, 15 6. Montoya coming back to dominate in game two, 15 2, which means only one thing. We're going to a tiebreaker. Now remember, game three is played the first to 11 win by one. We will be back in just a few moments with that tiebreaker, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Pan American Racquetball Championships in Temuco, Chile. We're watching the men's singles competition. Rodrigo Montoya is there in the, in the sidelines. He came back to win game two, 15-2. He's playing against Carlos Keller of Bolivia, who won game one, 15-6. I'm joined by Gary Mazaroff. And Gary, what are your thoughts on what we might expect to see in this tiebreaker? Carlos, number one, needs to get more animated like he was in game one and lessen the number of unforced errors. We said earlier when he was serving in game two, a critical inning was the first one. He needed a score to keep that momentum. Rodrigo got in and really never let up. And a big factor is that second serve, when he's hit fault serves, he's been hitting that high Z lob right side. And Carlos, by and large, with one exception, has gone to the ceiling. 
and it did neutralize what Rodrigo was able to do. There's that power that you were talking about, Laura. Very, di you know it's coming, but it's very difficult to do anything with it. It's a first point for Montoya. Remember, the tiebreaker is played first to 11 points. Fault serve, second serve. Watch for the high Z lob right, folks. Here, Team Bolivia cheering on their teammate. So what he did there was he didn't wait. He came in on it, took it off an intermediate bounce, and hit a controlled overhead uh, cross court. First point for the Bolivian, it's tied up now 1-1. We talked a little bit earlier about how these courts are unfinished, so shouldn't leave too much sweat on the floor when these guys dive. Oh, we are in for quite a battle, aren't we, Gary? We are. Rodrigo read that right side drive right on top of it. Hit a winner. Let's see if he goes back to his drive left. 1-1 one, one in game three. Same scenario as previous points. Short serve, high Z lob right. Carlos again took the ball a little bit early and hit a controlled overhead, but uh, wasn't able to win that rally. <laughs> Carlos needs to get a lead in this game, get that confidence back and put pressure on Rodrigo. Short serve. Second serve for Keller. Wow. Well, Gary, you know what you're talking about. You called it in game two. You said Montoya needed to get a lead to get his confidence back, and he did so much that he won the game. And Keller is starting that now, just as you predicted, 2-2. Two, two. Wow. There's the lead. Now let's see if he can uh, keep the momentum and close out Rodrigo. So it's 3-2, tiebreak in favor of Keller. Short serve. So smooth, he makes that look easy. Disappointment from Rodrigo. Body language has changed again. More confidence. Four serving two. Oh, they were going to award Carlos at a point they're going to appeal. Five, two. 
So and that was a, an avoidable hinder called point scored for Keller. Comes under failure to move. So then it looks like after that appeal, Rodrigo Montoya called a timeout. Yes, he's there talking to his coaches. He did use an appeal. The call will stand. Carlos Keller leads now 5-2. So losing that appeal means Montoya has used up one of his three appeals. So folks, international play, we, we talked about this earlier. International and U.S. rules are different. Uh, many elements. Timeouts allotted, the amount of time, the number of appeals allotted whether one is entitled to a game-ending appeal or not. And the nuances of the rules come into play. That's where the coaching staff comes in. Doesn't hurt that the players know the rules either, Laura. <laughs> So for those who don't know what an appeal is, basically we have an extra set of referees who are called line judges on either side of the court. They're acting as an extra pair of eyes. So a player has three opportunities to try to override the call of the main ref by using those line judges. That's gonna put Keller up now at 6-2. Disgusto. Rodrigo's disgusted. Pounding his legs with his racket. Confidence in favor of Keller. Ooh. We'll see what the call is. He's appealing. I believe a dead ball hinder was called replay. However, Carlos is appealing for the avoidable. Looks like the line judges were split. So Carlos will have used one of his appeals. Replay, 6-2. Second serve for Keller. Wow, you can hear that power. That's impressive, Laura. That was a nice ceiling ball by Rodrigo. He was patient, hit the ball deep. Carlos takes it with his backhand from above eye level and rolls it left side. Critical inning here for both players. Two serving seven in our tiebreaker. Bit by bit, Rodrigo needs to get back into this game. That'll help. Point for the Mexican. Keller crushing that opportunity. He got the first serve in, he got the weak return, ended the rally on his next shot. Serve, return, kill. That's ideal. 8-3. Pressure on Rodrigo, Laura. Yes. 
Front wall, side wall, kiss. Two bounces. Timeout. That's Rodrigo Montoya's second timeout of this game, which means he has no more timeouts. He's struggling a little bit here in the tiebreaker. Carlos Keller is now two points away from taking this match and sending himself to the finals. This is effectively game one again. Right. Same thing happened. 15-6, Carlos closed it out. Things reversed in game two. Body language changed. For one reason or another, credit Carlos and the coaching staff. He was able to get back to where he was in game one. As you say, two points. So Renteria is telling him, hey, you've been here before. One thing at a time. Let's get the serve back. Point, point. Put more pressure on Carlos. You have to play one point at a time. Here we go. Keller leads 9-3. See if Montoya can break this momentum. Bless his heart, Carlos. He's showing his animation by showing a fist pump. <laughs> Match point now for the Bolivian. Oh. Do you notice that uh, Rodrigo put his hand up asking for a hinder, I believe? Carlos could, could appeal that. So Not that you're going to get the call, yeah. <laughs> but strange things happen. That's why I guess it's good to save some of those appeals, right? A absolutely. Ace serve for Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico. Four serves, ten. See what Carlos does with this. High Z lob right. So what he's done, Laura, he comes in, takes it a little bit earlier on the intermediate bounce, not a short hop, and he hits a controlled overhead, putting Rodrigo in deep court, and Rodrigo made an errant return on that. That's it, folks. That's it. Keller. All wins are great, but that's a great win, Laura. Absolutely. Winning game one, 15-6. Losing game two, 15-2. And coming back to win in the breaker, 11-4. Just incredible from Keller. He's playing for Team Bolivia.